This is the second video in the series about our four-stage 12-step data analytics roadmap. Today we will talk about the ways to collect the data, what exactly to collect, where to store those data, and then the how. What is the process looks like for different types of data? If you haven't watched the previous video about the stage number one of our roadmap, the analytics plan yet, I'll leave a link in the description down below. But make sure you watch it because it's really foundational for any data projects for any business. Hey there, I'm Yevgen. You are at our OX Bay YouTube channel where we speak all things about analytics, marketing, spreadsheets, and all sorts of data manipulation. In this video, we are going to be focusing on the stage number two, data collection, not the ground part, but the first actionable part where you start actually working with data, touching your data for the first time. Based on the needs, you will need to collect data from the different sources or different systems and place them into some other places, data storages, spreadsheets, warehouses, databases. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what data to collect, where to store them and, more importantly, how you should be collecting the data about your business to make them accessible for your analysis. And typically that doesn't look like a data source to data visualization tool. As you are watching this video, if you have any questions about the topics I cover or anything else about data analytics, just drop them down in the comments below. Before we dive in, if you are enjoying this video content, please give me a like and subscribe to our channel to get more videos just like this one. If you are new to our roadmap, it's a highway built on solid strategies and proven tactics used by thousands of our customers. It has four big stages – the plan, the data collection, preparation, and then insights delivery. Plan is all about setting out with clarity. Now, where you're going towards as a business, defining the right questions to answer and the right metrics to measure in order to answer those questions. And just once again, we have that video already available and you can watch it right here. Stage 2. Data collection. Here we focus on gathering the right pieces of information, ensuring they are complete, trusted and fit your puzzle perfectly. That's what we are talking about in this video. Then comes data preparation stage. It's not enough to just have data. If it's siloed, it's as good as useless. We need to normalize it, merge it, we need our data to communicate to each other, so at the end of the day, we make our data work for us. And finally, delivery stage. This is where we bring it all together, making sure our insights are not only accessible, but actionable. It's turning those report insights into business growth. Utilizing the right tools to collect and analyze data is crucial. That's about the how. What's more important now is the, the what and where side of things. What data you collect and where to store them. So, as I mentioned, today's video is all about nailing the data collection. We're going to be focusing on three different types of data. First, it's about internal data. It's about the transactions like from CRM or ERP systems, POS systems, finance data, product data, or sometimes this all just called as backend business data. Those are your sales figures, exact sales figures, details about the clients, suppliers, basically everything from the inside of the business. That kind of data is the backbone of any business. Without accurate internal data, it's like building on a shaky foundation. Everything else becomes less reliable. Second. It's all about the data from the external systems, the data you get from another tools, the tools that you don't own. Well, that data might still be generated by your business, but the way you work with them is typically different. As an example here, we can look at Facebook ads or Google ads data, like advertising dollars spent to get the traffic to your website. And finally, user behavior data, typically what's known as web analytics, like Google Analytics, for example. Yes, you might say data analytics is, is way wider than just marketing, I agree. But every business has a website, and most of those websites have a Google Analytics property linked to it. That is why it's very important to know how to work with the, this type of data as well. How to collect, store, organize, and utilize it. 
Now that we've covered the types of data, let me walk through a practical example – collecting data for an e-commerce store. Whether it's a small online shop or a large retail business, the process of gathering data is quite similar. What specific data do we need? Well, first, it's sales data. That's about transaction details – order IDs, end dates, discounts, total amounts, customer IDs, product IDs. You will typically gather this data from the CRM or ERP system. Then the customer data goes – information about the customers, like their names, email addresses, maybe you might need to, to find their purchase history and add it as well. This usually comes from the CRM systems as well, but from another table. Next, the product data. Details about the products you sell, including the product IDs that you already have, but you would also need the categories, the pricing, the inventory levels, the brands. This can be pulled from your inventory management system. For a more detailed analysis, you will need the advertising data. Data about your ad spend, impressions, clicks, and conversions from the platforms like Google Ads or Facebook Ads. And finally, if you've been selling online, you need the user behavior data. Information about how users interact with your website, such as page views, session durations, bound rates, and conversion path. This data typically comes from the web analytics tool like Google Analytics. Typically, you don't need this to be in the same table, no, but you will need all of those different types of data to then slice and dice it for your analysis going forward. Once you've found the data, where it's all stored originally, all this data, the next step is figuring out where to store it so you can now work with the data. So let's discuss all of the possible storage options. First, you can store everything in spreadsheets. The pros would be that spreadsheets like Google Sheets or Excel are easy to use, widely accessible for anyone, and great for small ad hoc analytics tasks. That's perfect all-in-one option for simple reporting. However, spreadsheets come with a lot of limitations. They are not ideal for handling large volumes of data. As your data needs or the business itself grows, you will quickly outgrow the capabilities of any spreadsheet tool. Super quickly. We'll get to the spreadsheets again when talking about the transformation in data visualization, but for data storage, I would personally use them only for very specific ad hoc tasks. Look, I'm not a geek. I use spreadsheets a lot for all sorts of data tasks, but in most cases, not for storing data. It's just not handy. For example, my boss is even doing personal finance and taxation stuff in a data warehouse. Another option would be to store data in all-style traditional databases. Databases like MySQL or PostgreSQL offer more robust storage solutions that, than spreadsheets. They've designed to store larger volumes of row-oriented tables, like lists of transactions, and can perform more advanced tasks. However, Traditional databases are still limited when it comes to real-time analytics or massive datasets. They are primarily designed for storing data, for writing data inside, not necessarily for in-depth analysis that, that modern business really requires. And here comes the king – data warehouses. When your data needs to go beyond what spreadsheets and traditional databases can handle, this is where data warehouses come into play. A data warehouse, like Google BigQuery or Amazon Redshift, is designed to store and analyze massive amounts of data quickly. With tools like BigQuery or Snowflake, you can handle enormous datasets with this. This is especially important for user behavior data from the tools like Google Analytics 4, where the volume of data can become overwhelming really quickly. Imagine you have 10,000 visitors on the website per month. Typically, that would be over 300,000 of events generated by users on the website. Each event – that's a single line of those data, the rows that might also include a raise inside. What if your website is more popular, or you need to grab the data for more than 30 days at a time? Any spreadsheet would not handle this. A data warehouse becomes really the best storage options very quickly. And unlike classic databases, data warehouses are optimized for real-time analytics. They allow for complex queries and huge datasets in seconds, which is crucial for making business decisions on time. To showcase this, one of our clients, SEMrush, the number one SEO platform, is making real-time analytics of the website data. They do analyze what's happened minutes ago on the website. And they have millions of visitors. 
Look, spreadsheets are great for small-scale projects but struggle with large tables. Traditional databases, while good for structured storage, writing, lack the real-time analytical power needed for modern business intelligence. This is where a data warehouse excels, providing the infrastructure needed for both storage and speed. And the beauty of this is that a data analyst do not typically need to learn a lot of new skills to handle modern cloud-based data warehouses like BigQuery. It's pretty easy to manage. If you are looking for fewer limits and a wider range of possibilities, considering a data warehouse is your next step in your analytics setup. And the data warehouses are not as expensive as that sound. In fact, there is almost a free option from Google to store Google Analytics data in their warehouse, BigQuery. We have four videos on this channel about GA4 to BigQuery Expert, and that's a smart move for any business, no matter you, how you're going to use and analyze those data, right now or not. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I highly recommend checking it out for a dive deep into how BigQuery makes analyzing user behavior data at scale not just easier, but more powerful. I'll leave a link to a playlist with those videos in the description. Ok, now you know where to collect the data from. You know where you want to place those data – spreadsheets, databases or a warehouse. I have prepared several useful tips for you that will make your life easier. So tip number one. When collecting internal data, focus on the most critical data points first. Overcomplicating your data structure from the outset, collecting too much of the data points can lead to overwhelm and confusion. Begin with core elements like IDs and one, two, up to three essential details for each of those entries. But ID is important. Like if that's order, get the order ID, sales amount and the order date. You will be able to get more information when you need it, but keep it clean from the beginning. By simplifying your data structure early on, you allow for faster implementation and less errors. Missing deadlines can make business users unhappy and unsure about the reports. To avoid this, start with less data. Take it one thing at a time and make sure you send reports on time. That way, you will build trust and give conversation that really helps the business. Next, tip number two. Depth over breadth. It's exactly the opposite. When dealing with external data sources like advertising platforms, prioritize collecting data at the most granular level possible. This means capturing detailed information such as specific ad creative performance, keyword data, and user engagement metrics. The more granular your data is, the more precise and actionable your insights will be. Plus, granular data collection allows you to slice and dice the data in various ways, make your analysis flexible and easier to identify trends, so that then, then business can make more data-backed decisions. Tip number three is about the how. It's about the tools. Here's the rule. Efficiency over complexity. While custom-built connectors can be powerful, but they require ongoing maintenance to keep up with API changes and updates. Instead, focus on using third-party tools that require no support from your team. Even though you might have to pay some dollars for each of those connectors, this approach reduces the technical burden on your team and at the end of the day, at the end of the long game, you can reduce the operational costs and improve the overall efficiency of your data processes. And look, when you load data from multiple external sources, the structure would be different. This is why integrating external data into the data warehouse from the very beginning allows for simplest cross-data source analysis in the future. By bringing data together from various external sources into a single data warehouse, you create a unified dataset that is easier to analyze, compare, and report on. How? This is what we'll talk in specific in the next video, the stage number three of our roadmap, the data preparation. To avoid confusion and ensure smooth analysis, keep your data well organized. Use consistent naming conventions, clear hierarchies, and standardized formats to make the data easy to navigate and understand. By maintaining an easily manageable data structure, you can extract actionable insights faster, which directly impacts your personal speed and performance. For user behavior data, consider implementing server-side tracking, so you truly own the data rather than, than your analytics tool. 
outdated, client-side tracking can be prone to inaccuracies due to ad blockers, cookie restrictions, and the privacy concerns. Move to the server-side tracking for greater control over the data collection process, reducing the likelihood of data loss and improving the overall quality of your analytics. We have a series of videos about the server-side tracking, what it really is, what's the difference between the client-side and the server-side tracking, and what are the reasons for you to implement it right now. Plus, it's more convenient in terms of GDPR and the other privacy limitations. I'll leave those links to the videos in the description down below. To sum it up, data collection is not just about gathering information. It's about setting the stage for a powerful narrative that your business can rely on. Think of your data as the raw ingredients in a recipe. The more carefully you select them, natural, looking good, the easier it would be to prepare them, to cook them then. And then, the better the final dish will be. By simplifying your internal data structure, collecting external data with the highest granularity possible, minimizing connector support, you are ensuring that your data is not just abundant, but also meaningful and actionable within the business. And there you have it. Today, we covered the types of data you need to collect – internal, external, and the user behavior data. We discussed the importance of using a data warehouse to manage and analyze large-scale datasets effectively. And we went through practical tips to make your data collection processes smoother and more efficient. Now that you've learned how to collect your data effectively, the next step is to ensure that data is prepared, your ingredients are sliced and diced, and ready for being cooked. In our next video, we dive into stage number 3 of the 12-step data analytics roadmap – data preparation. It's already available on the channel, so go and check it out. Or schedule it for tomorrow. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. And don't forget to leave any questions or thoughts you have in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Remember, data collection is where your analysis journey truly begins. But without proper preparation, it's like building a house without connecting the walls between them. Each piece of data needs to fit perfectly with others to create a clear, actionable picture. So, make sure to tune in to our next video where we will ensure your data is ready to deliver it those valuable insights that drive business growth. Thanks for watching, I'm Yevgen from OVAX, and until next time, keep pushing the boundaries, stay data curious, and as always, happy analyzing!